After the introduction of the ballpoint pen, many of the major, well-established fountain pen companies in the U.S. really struggled to navigate the changes that took place in the writing instruments market. Many went out of business or were sold to larger conglomerates. One such firm was the venerable pen manufacturer, Schaefer. Founded in 1913, the company was one of the pioneers of the golden age of fountain pens. Schaefer was U.S. owned until 1997 when it was purchased by the French conglomerate BIC of cheap lighter and hotel pen fame for $50 million. In 2003, BIC announced that it would be shutting down the company's Fort Madison, Iowa factory, which at its peak employed over 1,000 employees. By the time the factory was fully shuttered in 2008, there were only 40 employees remaining. BIC then moved Schaefer's manufacturing to China and its business operations to Slovakia. In 2014, Schaefer was sold once again, this time to the AT Cross Company for only $15 million. Schaefer's vintage pens are among some of the most collectible, drawing in many who prefer to specialize in one of their iconic lines like the PFM, the pen for men, or the balance. Modern Schaefer pens, on the other hand, have developed a, shall we say, less than glowing reputation. But there was a period between the purchase of Schaefer by Bic and the shutdown of the Fort Madison factory when Schaefer was putting out some really wonderful writing instruments, including the pen in today's review, the Schaefer Legacy II. Hey guys, welcome to The Pen Habit. Glad to have you here for another pen review video. Uh, before I start on the review, I wanted to thank the Van Ness Pen Company at vanness1938.com for providing the pens for today's review. You'll understand why they did toward the end when I'm talking about the prices, but in the meantime, thank you uh, for providing them for review and eventual giveaway. This is another giveaway pen. I've got a lot of great giveaway pens this season, so as you've probably noticed by now. So, Anyway, let's dive in. The pen for today's review is the Schaefer Legacy II. Now, back in the 60s, Schaefer came up with the Schaefer PFM, or the pen for men, with some really hysterically sexist ads. I mean, they, you, you can find them online. They're, they're pretty funny um, in a not funny ha-ha, more funny uh-oh kind of way. Uh, in any case, uh, back in the 90s, Schaefer was struggling. You know, they had just been purchased by, um, by Bic. They were struggling to figure out how they were going to survive in this modern world. And one of the things they tried to do was to come up with a pen line that was very similar to the PFM called the Legacy. And there was the Schaefer Legacy 1, the Schaefer Legacy 2, and then another, I think the Schaefer Legacy Heritage. Um, now, I'm not a Schaefer lorist. I don't know all of the differences between them, but uh, it is my understanding that Schaefer Heritage was just a standard cartridge converter filled pen. I don't really know the difference between the Legacy 1 and Legacy 2. I couldn't find any really explicit information online do doing my research. But it's pretty clear, I don't have a PFM to show you for comparison, but it's pretty clear that the, um, that the Legacy 1 and the Legacy 2 are... Um, are very, very much an, an ancestor of the PFM. Made from metal, uh, they, these, the Legacy 2 comes in a, a variety of different colors. Uh, this is the black version. It's a, you know, metal, lacquer on metal. Um, this is the copper version. Now, it's not actually made of copper. It's kind of a, a brown, shiny metal. It's almost like a brown ruthenium uh, type coating. It's beautiful. I really like the copper one. The black one's nice too, um, but the copper is just different enough that it stands out for me. So um, I'll show you the black one to start off with. So it's, um, you've got kind of a rounded top here. You've got the Schaefer clip, which is very consistent across a lot of their pens. It's hinged, which is nice. Uh, I've got the little white dot on the top of the clip, which 
if you know much about Schaefer, history used to indicate a lifetime warranty, and then they changed it to the lifetime of the, the first owner, and then they just changed it to mean it was a mark of quality. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really mean anything anymore because they put it on all of their pens, but uh, once upon a time, it used to have a meaning. Um, so nice flat line clip. It's got very much kind of that, that 60s uh, postmodern vibe about it, you know, very streamlined and modern. Um, kind of a look to it. The big fat cat band says Schaefer, and that's it. Um, and then the pen tapers down to a flat point down here. Now, one of the things that is interesting about the Legacy 2 is that this is a touchdown filler. Um, and I'm not a Schaefer, again, I, I'm not a Schaefer lorist or a Schaefer historian. I'm not completely up to speed on this. But back in the day, especially with the PFM, Schaefer had a system called the snorkel system. So basically you'd twist the end of the pen and a little tube would extend from the nib so you could ink up from that tube without having to dip the nib in the bottle of ink and get it all dirty. Cool system, from what I understand, it is a real pain in the butt to clean or to, to repair. I've never had one, I've never tried to repair it, but from what I understand, they're a real pain to repair. Um, Along with the snorkel, there was a touchdown system, which is kind of the, the precursor to a modern day vacuumatic filler. It's like a cross between a vacuumatic filler and a pneumatic filler. And I'll, I'll show that to you um, here. I'm gonna take the cap off and um, we'll get to the section in the nib in just a second. But in the old pens, this metal tube here was connected, it was attached to the, um, to the section. And then at the end, there was a little hole. And inside, there's a latex sack. So to fill the pen, with or without the snorkel, you'd unscrew the back of the pen, pull up this tube, stick the nib in the ink, or stick the, sn stick the snorkel in the ink, and then push it down. Pushing it down would compress the, the latex sack inside that metal tube. Um, and then as you got the, the tube to the very bottom, the air would release. There's a, they've got it... They've got, you can see it here, a little, um, oh, you can't see it unless I put it on the screen, uh, a little channel here. So as you push it down, once it gets all the way down, uh, that releases the vacuum, uh, releases the, the pressure that builds up, the latex sac re-expands, sucks ink up, and that's how that works. Now on the Legacy 1 and Legacy 2, Schaefer did something a little unusual but I think wise for the modern era, which was that they also made it possible for you to remove this, this filler here and replace it with a standard Schaefer, you know, twist converter or cartridges. So if you didn't want to use this touchdown filler or you didn't have bottled ink, you could still use the Legacy 1 or Legacy 2. Um, the only downside to that is on the original touchdown fillers, as I understand it, you really only had to do, to do the touchdown once in order to get a really full fill on the pen. Because that removable touchdown converter is not as airtight as the old system was, which was attached to the pen, uh, it doesn't work quite as well. So you have to kind of pump the, the touchdown filler twice. You have to try to fill it twice to get quite as full a fill. It's a cool system. It's a little bit of a pain to clean, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I actually discovered that if you just <laughs> stuck the nib in some water and, you know, you could blow into that little hole on the end of the the touchdown converter to compress and release the ink sac several times pretty rapidly. So that actually worked out pretty well. Um, and because it's removable, you can just put a, um, a bulb syringe on the nib section and that works nicely. As far as the nib section goes, this is one of Schaefer's lovely inlaid nibs. So it's, it's a very conical section, kind of comes down to a point. Um, you, can, you can tell that they were going after the same sort of vibe as the Parker 51 was going for that very no step down, no threads, very kind of streamlined look when the pen is uncapped. I actually find that I like this look a little bit better than that of the Parker 51. Uh, the nib designation width is right here on the back, but then you've got this really, really beautiful long inlaid nib. Now inlaid nibs can be a little bit tricky to work with. Uh, they they can come off, they don't often, but it is possible. They're a little bit more difficult to adjust because you can't pull them out of the pen as easily as you can friction fit nibs. Uh, but they're really, 
eye-catching, really attractive, and in the case of every Schaefer inlaid nib I've ever used, they write like a dream. This is an 18 karat gold nib, uh, and it is very soft and very juicy and quite lovely. So the pen does not, for me, need to be posted. It's long enough, and because the section is tapered like this, you can hold it all over the place, depending on how you like to hold your pen. Um, the pen can be posted. It posts quite deeply. Um, it does add some extra weight. This is not a light pen, but it is so, it posts so deeply that it's still really nicely balanced. And I'm comfortable using this pen either posted or unposted in my hand. I know I say I love a lot of nibs, and I do. I've got a lot of really great nibs in my collection. They're, they either came great, or I made them great, or I took them someone to make them great for me. There are very few in my collection that I like as much as I love this inlaid nib. It is ludicrously smooth. I mean, it is, it is probably a one on the, the feedback scale. There just is no feedback. It is also very nice and juicy. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little tiny bit on the wide side for a medium nib, but it's not bad. Um, but this pen just glides across the page. You hardly need to touch it to the paper at all, and it just writes every time. There's been no ink starvation, no hard starting, no skipping, no problems of any kind in any way, any shape, or any form. Um, Plus, I'm sorry, but that just 
looks cool. It looks cool to write with it. It looks cool to watch your, your nib as you're writing. It's just a cool looking pen. It is wonderfully balanced in the hand. It writes like a dream. It, you know, I just don't know what else to say about it. It's really, really nice. I also got one of these pens and had it ground into an architect's nib. And I've talked about this before, but an architect's nib is basically a, it's a, it's a stub, which is, you know, kind of flat this way, but it's flat this way. It's like a stub turned 90 degrees. And it's pretty dependent on the angle at which you hold the pen. So if you, you know, if you're looking at it sideways, if, if you've got a vertical, if you hold your pen like this, obviously the, the nib is going to be different than if you hold your pen like this. So they have to grind architect nibs for the way you write. Um, but I, I took one of the medium nibs and had it ground to an architect nib. Um, so you can see here, these are the vertical strokes. These are the horizontal strokes. And it's a medium architect's nib. It's not a, um, it's not a, a wide broad or anything like that. But look at how wet that is. It's just, it's nice flowy, flowy ink. And there's, you know, a little bit of give to the nib. Um, it really is just a gorgeous, gorgeous writer. Both this one and the regular medium, which I used earlier, you know, all of them just, I cannot say enough nice about this nib. It is a superb writer. Now, obviously, the Schaefer Legacy 2 is no longer a production line pen for Schaefer. It went out of production in the mid-2000s, right about the same time the company's U.S. factory was starting to get shut down. Uh, some collectors went and bought up the remaining stock of Schaefer's pens, and that is how a large chunk of these pens, what are considered new old stock, they've never been sold, they've never been inked, ended up at Van Ness Pens, and why they sent these two pens to me for review and for giveaway. Now, the pen used to retail at around $300. It now is listed on the Van Ness site for about $150. For $150, you're going to be getting a really well-made, solid, but kind of heavy metal pen with a gorgeous, wet, juicy, bouncy 18 karat gold nib. Um, the nib alone is worth $150 in my opinion. It is that good of a writer. Um, it's a pretty pen, it's very well made. They are solid as all get out. This is one of those pens that you could probably roll over with your car and the only thing it would hurt is a little bit of scratching on the, on the outside. They're beautiful pens and they write like a dream. Now, um, you can also still find these Legacy 2s out and about in the wild. There are a lot of collectors who have taken the sections and the caps from the Legacy 2s and then turned new bodies out of acrylic. So you can get uh, acrylic. I know Jim Rouse, who uh, of the Franklin Christoph Pen Company, uh, has a line of these that he calls the, the, what is it, the Schaefer Fantasy, which is basically a Legacy section and nib with a body of a different acrylic. So there's a lot of opportunities out there to get a legacy nib, but if you wanted to get the actual legacy new old stock the way it was sold from the factory when the factory was still open and making them, uh, I know that Van Ness Pens has several hundred of these still in stock in their store down in Arkansas. So take that for what it's worth. It's a great pen. I love mine. Um, I'm looking forward to giving one away. These are beautiful pens, amazing writers, and whoever ends up winning it will really love it. Speaking of giveaways, uh, always make sure that you're checking out penhabit.com or facebook.com slash penhabit or twitter.com slash penhabit for announcements of giveaways. Um, that's where I announce them and the form will be on penhabit.com. So just follow the link and fill out the form on the page in order to enter. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. I've got a lot of giveaways going on this season, so I'm not doing them immediately after I review the pens. I'm trying to space them out so I don't have several giveaways right on top of each other. Gotta, gotta spread out the love a little bit. Well, I think that should do it for this review of the Schaefer Legacy 2. Again, a huge thanks to Van Ness Pen Company for providing these pens for review and the black one for giveaway. And I will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks so much. Bye.